What's going on YouTube? Today we'll be working on my 1993 Mazda Miata. But not only that, we're going to be using SolidWorks and we're going to be printing our own replacement parts. Look at those spider webs. Oh damn it, I missed it! Oh, look, I'm bleeding. Oh, I just walked through that spider web. Ah, oh, jeez. To be honest, I expected a huge gush of water to come out. Well, it didn't kill us, so that's a plus. So here we are inside my 1993 Mazda Miata. Today we will be working on these. So as most Miata owners will know, these sun visors do pretty much nothing. This is basically what I would see if I was to use this while driving. So yeah, that doesn't really work for me. And if we come off to the side, it may look like it covers a bunch, but if you look at the actual size of the window, all of this is where sunlight comes through and hits me in the face. So what I wanna do is remove the two screws that hold this in, and then I wanna make my own new block off plate with SolidWorks and my new 3D printer. Step one is going to be removing the two Phillips head screws that hold this in. These are countersunk holes, which we will be duplicating in the 3D model. And this is probably gonna follow me as soon as I get this screw undone. And it didn't fall on me. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> so there's a little plastic receiver that looks like it slides into the place of the hole, but we don't need to worry about that. All we're going to be doing is making a shape that's large enough to fit on this surface and still picks up these two holes. I'm placing the screws that I removed in this cup holder. We will be reusing them. So the first thing I normally do before a design is I'll sketch the initial shape because then I can pull my dimensions from that point. So I'm going to have an origin and then these holes. So I'll know once I put in my overall dimension for the length, I'll know how far in or say from the center point to go to pick up my next dimensions. And we'll go from there. So let me pull those dimensions off of the actual piece. So for pulling all my dimensions, I use an old set of dial calipers. I bought these about five years ago from McMaster for about, I don't know, $120. It's money well spent. I've used them thousands of times. So I'm gonna pull off all the dimensions that I need and transfer them over to my sketch. Now that I have all the dimensions I need, it's time to transfer all that information over to SolidWorks. Since I'm going to be printing this face down, I'm going to start with the top plane and make a sketch on that. I'm going to be starting with three circles because this is an oval piece. We can adjust the sizes of everything later. Next thing I'm gonna do is join the centers of all the circles together to set up that mate. Then I'm going to draw a vertical line, tangent outside edge of each of the end circles to set up my endpoints. So now if I dimension from the center of one circle to the outside edge of the other and go my overall length divided by two, so 2.325 divided by two, that pulls that in. I'll do the same thing on the other side, 2.325 divided by two. And I know that my overall inside diameter is 1.25. And my outside diameters are 0.95. So I'll do that to each of them, 0.95. Obviously there are many ways you could get this accomplished. You could have just mirrored half of this. You could have dimensioned this circle and then did the equal mate over to this side. This is just how I'm doing it for this first show. Now with all of my hard dimensions set up, I'm going to draw my tangent lines between the two arcs. You'll see what this will do in a second. They just need to be rough estimates. Nothing needs to be perfect. Okay, I put the camera on this makeshift stand for the time being because I'm going to need two hands for this. So, Alright, if you grab one of the lines and hit control, hold control, click on the next circle, and you say tangent mate, that will bring it to the tangent edge. You do the same thing for this side. Tangent. Did you see it snap together there? Go here to here. Tangent. Holding control here to here. Tangent. Stretch that line to make sure it's actually making contact. We'll do the same thing on the underside. 
tangent to the outside edge, tangent to the inside edge, tangent to the outside edge, tangent to the inside edge. Next we will be using the trim tool to get rid of all the excess that we don't need. Don't worry about the lines not being affixed to anything, we will re-dimension them in a second. Okay, so now we can see our rough shape really coming together. We're going to go ahead and throw some quick dimensions on this again, now that we have everything in place where we need it. looking pretty good. Next we are going to extrude the piece a quarter of an inch because that's the overall thickness of what we need this to be. 0.25 that surface looks good. The next thing we're going to be doing is putting in our holes. Next thing we're going to be doing is using the hole wizard to place our countersunk holes into position. So it doesn't matter what size we start with, as long as we are on the right origin or sketch line. So let's draw a line between those two points. And we know that the overall distance between both centers is 1.4125. So we type that in, divide by 2. Do the same thing on this side, 1.4125 divided by 2. That's exactly where the holes need to be. So after finding out which of the countersunk holes ended up closest, because I measured the thread size hole at 0.225, we're going to go with the number 12 flathead screw, uh, 82 pitch. So we'll hit the checkbox and that's going to make the holes inside there. The next thing we need to do is fillet the edge so it's not so rough. So we'll go over to the fillet command click on the edge and we just need to find a size that fits us. So at a quarter inch it's a little too big so we'll go to an eighth of an inch and that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and paint this in the blue ABS plastic color that I'll be printing it in. Uh, I do have black ABS but I don't know I don't want to switch the filament. <laughs> I'll just paint this with a spray can. So now that it's blue, all we need to do is save it in the right file type that our slicer will be able to understand. Cura, the 3D slicing software that I'll be using, uses a .stl file. So we'll go up to File, Save As, find the .stl, give it our name. It's already in the right folder that I want it to be. It's going to be the Sun Visor Delete Plate. Hit Save. Yes. I'm also going to save it again as a SOLIDWORKS uh, SLD PRT. Okay, save. We can now close SOLIDWORKS. Now with Cura open, I'm going to bring in my new part file. Hit open. It placed it in the wrong orientation, so we will switch that because I want this part to be flat, not <laughs> not printed on its end. So we use the rotate command, grab it in this axis, and it's giving me a list of uh, degrees on the side, so I know that's going to be 90 degrees, and that looks pretty good right there. Next thing we'll do is fill in our settings and then save the file. Okay, so now it's on our little SD card. We can inject the SD card and place that into the printer. So I've gone ahead and applied the bed adhesive, which is the glue and water. Then I rehomed the extruder nozzle, made sure that it was the correct distance away from the bed. And now we select from the memory card our sun visor delete plate. Bed heating. I should also note that there was a bit of plastic extruded from the nozzle, so I cut that off before starting everything.
So there we have it. Our total build time was 43 minutes to complete. Let's pop this off the hot plate and see what we end up with. So I was so pleased with how the part came out of the printer. Obviously it's not, you know, a thousand percent perfect. But for what I'm going to be doing with it, I think it's pretty darn good. Uh, this was the surface that was up against the heater bed. This is the side that you'll actually see. This is exactly how it came out of the printer. You can see a bit of a lip around the bottom edge that was affixed to the table. I could cut that off with the blade or we could sand this down or give it a light acetone bath if we wanted it perfect, but I don't need it to be perfect. But honestly, the blue might stick out a bit. So I figure we will get a little piece of cardboard and we'll give this one a touch of paint. We'll let the top layer dry, then we'll flip it over. Since our new plastic piece is gonna look so good, I may as well make the screws look equally good. Here's a little tip. If you have a piece of cardboard, poke two holes in it with a screwdriver and then place the bolts or screws in there. That way you can paint around them evenly. Okay, so we'll let everything dry and we'll see what we get. So now that our part is dry, we can flip it over and paint the other side. We'll let that side dry and then move on to the next step. Screws are looking pretty fresh. So here you can see the original part next to my 3D printed one along with the newly painted screws. I noticed that the edge of my 3D printed one is a little bit sharper. You can see it's a lot smoother on the original part. I could have sanded this out or I could have made the fillet a little bit softer around that edge so we could have saved that one but overall i am extremely happy with my first car part ever 3d printed let's go install it so as you can see i started threading in the first one let's see if we can hand start the second one yep yeah, goes in real easy now we'll grab the screwdriver and tighten them up Snug, 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 and there you go. How cool does that look? It's nice and flush with the rest of it. So we can see over here, this would be the original. Uh, yeah. There you go. So now you can see the original way it looked over there. And here's the new one. And we can see that my visibility on this side is much better than it is over there. So I am super happy with that result. And I already have the second one printing. We might also replace this soon too. Since I don't have a rear view mirror, why have this ugly black plastic piece here when I could 3D print myself a new one? Okay, now that that's all done, I'm super pleased with the result. I just wanted to thank you for watching this video and supporting my channel, Do Something Every Day 2. If you could, please hit the like and subscribe button. That really helps us out. Otherwise, we will see you on the next episode. But that's not all. Because I've already done 90% of this project, you can go on grabcad.com, G-R-A-B-C-A-D.com, and you can download my model by searching for it under Miata Sun Visor Delete Plate. Even if you search just Miata on Grabcad, you'll find my model to download for free. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Do Something Every Day Too.